Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to navigate in the viewport. So what we're looking at in this window right here is the viewport. It has the grid inside of it, and it's sort of where everything is happening inside of Maya. So you're modeling and building your scenes and animating in this viewport. Let's first take a look at how we navigate in here, and to help with that, we can drop something in our scene here so we can see our perspective. Let's go ahead and drop in a cube. So I'm just coming up here to the poly modeling shelf. The second one over here is a cube, and I'm just clicking on that, and it's dropping out here in the middle. Let's hit F on the keyboard. That frames up on whatever object you have selected, and it also makes that the pivot point. If you hold down the Alt key, if you're on a Apple, then that's going to be the Option key. So hold down Alt, and then with your right mouse button, you can zoom in and out. So you can see the arrows right there going in and out. So this is actually the perspective camera moving in and out of the scene. Okay. And then if you hold down the middle mouse button, which is probably a trackball, this is going to allow you to pan in the scene up and down, left to right. Okay, so that's just moving along the Y and the X axis. And then with the left mouse button, this is allowing you to tumble around your scene here. Okay, in 3D space. All right, you'll notice down here in the corner, we can see the direction of everything in our scene. Y is always up in Maya, so Y is uh, up and down. And then along this axis right here is the X, and then this one right here is the Z. Okay, so you can see where the intersection is happening right here with those thicker lines. This is where X, Y, and Z coordinates come together and start, so it's considered zero, zero, zero space. Okay, this is the center of Maya's world. And this is typically where things begin right here. So if you're modeling, especially for games, it's very important that you model on that 000 space. Okay, game engines are going to read things in uh, uh, based on this zero space right here. So within our scene, we drop objects in as we did here, and we can also manipulate these around as well. We do that by using our tools over here, and we've got move, rotate, and scale. Okay, let's start with move. So you can see the manipulator for this has got cones at the end here for the different axes. So we've got green, which is the Y axis, up and down. Red is the X axis, and the, uh, the one that I have selected right now. So when you select them, they're yellow. Uh, the blue one right here is the Z axis, okay? And in between, uh, we've also got some of these flat manipulators right here. This allows us to manipulate both these coordinates at the same time. Okay, and along the grid here, so if we move things along the grid, pulling these, you'll notice over here in your channel box that it's translating along the different axes. So we've got X, Y, and Z. So I can hit Z and go back to that. Okay, looks like I bumped it a little bit right there. I'm just going to put zero back in. Okay, so I can grab the X axes, the X manipulator, and move along that axis right here. Same thing with Z. And then in Y, it's going to go up and down. Okay. I can also come over here in the channels, in the channel box here, click drag, so that's holding down my left mouse button, click and drag, type in zero and hit enter, and that will bring it back to the zero space. Okay, let's switch over now to rotate, and this is the manipulator for rotation, so again you can see the color coordination. We've got rotating along the Y, the X, and the Z. Okay, and then we've got this light blue one out here, the outer ring. If you click on that, 
that will usually let you rotate in all directions. Okay. Again, I'm going to click and drag in here, type in zero, bring it back. And then our last one down here is scale. So you get these cubes on the end here, and you can scale in each of the directions here. So Y, X, and Z. And then you can grab the manipulators in between here and then scale in those two directions. So I'm scaling along the Z and the X right here. I can also scale in this direction. So that's Z and Y and X and Y. Okay. The one in the middle that's light blue, this will scale uniformly. So if I take everything here and go back to 1, and I grab the one in the middle here, this scales uniformly in all directions. So I can scale it down, and you can see that these are all the same. Okay. Another way to move scale and rotate is by just selecting the actual channel over here, or the name of the channel. So let's say I want to move this up off the grid, I can click on that translate Y. I can come over here in middle mouse and slide. Okay. And that will allow me to move without actually having to grab that manipulator. All right. And again, I'm going to just zero that back out. And let's take all of these back to one and just move out here. And you'll notice the grid here. So if we move along this grid, these are units that are correlating to how things translate and rotate and scale. So right now I just moved it in X in a positive direction. Okay, so it's just a little bit over one unit right here. So the grid is uh, broken up in positive and negative. So if I push it over to this side of the grid, this is zero right here, then it's going to go into a negative. Okay, same thing along the Z. This is negative. I've got it backwards here. Okay, so let's get it back here. Okay, so we've got uh, a positive direction and a negative. Okay, this is positive, and then below the grid it's going to be negative. All right. Again, I'm going to zero these out, bring them back. Okay, and you'll notice this manipulator lines up with this one over here. So, okay, so if you ever get flipped around and you're not sure which way it's going, um, you can always tell right here. Right now we've got uh, everything upside down, so we want to make sure that Y is always in the up direction. And so the grid, you can also snap along the grid. That is what these little magnets are up here. If we click on this one, and we go to W on the keyboard, which is the shortcut for move we can snap on the grid here. So now you see it's snapping along each one of these grids. If I let go, we're at negative 4. I could pull it forward in Z, so that's a positive direction for Z. Okay, I can also grab it in the middle here and snap it back here to the center. Okay, so that's what snapping along the grid does. If we come up to display, grid, option box, and we bring this up. We can see the various units in here. So uh, the length and width of the uh, units is 12. So we've got 12 in each direction here, 12 units going out. And grid lines are every five units. Okay, and subdivided by five. So you can play around with these if you're working in a, a different setting here. You can change all of that. Go ahead and close that. And then if we come under Windows, Settings and Preferences, Preferences, bring this over here. And we go under Settings. We can see that we are working in our units as centimeters. That's the default. You can also change it to meters, inches, foot, yard, millimeters. Uh, the tools are really set up to work well in centimeters, so they are usually on this. And uh, this is just referring to frames per second. This is for animation, so 24 frames per second. All right. And again, the up axis is Y. 
for the world coordinate system. Okay, so that's pretty much the default setting here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just close that. And then changing our panel layout right here, we can do that by coming under Panels, currently looking through the perspective camera. We can go to the orthographic views here of front side and top, so I can select the different cameras here. Okay. I can also create a new camera if I want to do that. I can have different panel layouts here. So if I want to switch over to a graph editor for animation, I can do that. Go back to my perspective camera. I can also use the shortcuts along here if I want to go to a four panel layout right here. I can click on here. I can also use the space bar and just tap. So tapping between the single panel layout Tapping on the spacebar will bring up the four panel layout and then wherever I hover over, mouse over, I can go into that different panel. Okay. I can also use a marking menu by holding down the spacebar, right mouse clicking, and then I can bring the cameras up through here under a marking menu and move much more quickly between the cameras. Okay. Back to perspective. I can go to a two panel side by side and I can also bring up what's called the outliner. So the outliner comes up as its own window and the outliner shows everything inside the scene here. So the one we have selected right now which is highlighted here in the outliner is P cube one. So P stands for polygon. Okay, if I were to drop a sphere in here and move that over then we would see P sphere one. Alright, there's pull down menus here for each of the different panels. There's different ways of viewing things. Okay. Different ways of shading. Okay, so we can go into an x-ray mode here which uh, puts on a transparency. You can see through there. Okay. We can go to wireframe, which is just the wireframe. We no longer see the shaded mesh on there anymore. Okay, and back to smooth. There's also hotkeys for that. I've still got x-ray on. Okay, and we've also got wireframe over shaded checked. Okay, so when I click on here, I can see the wireframe. I click off. There's no wireframe. If I want to see the wireframe while I have it deselected, I can choose that option right here. That's the shortcut for shading wireframe on shaded. Okay, and this will put a blue cage over your mesh and allow you to see your topology while you're uh, deselected on that object. Okay, when you're selected it goes to the bright green and the manipulator comes up on it. You can change your manipulator size by using the plus and minus keys to change that. All right. And we have lighting here, so there's a default light in the scene. That's what's lighting up our space here. If we use no lights, everything's going to go black. And this is actually a really good way of looking at your objects in a silhouette mode. If you're working on a character and you want to check out the silhouette of that character, you can turn the light off. Okay, we'll go back to default. We don't have any lights in our scene right now. If we did, we'd be able to select those or by going to 7. So there's hotkeys for all of this stuff as well. If we go to 4, that's wireframe. 5 is shaded. And then I can turn off the wireframe on shaded. So you can toggle back and forth between these two. Okay. And if we had textures on here, we would go to 6. We don't have any textures and we don't have any lights. So that's why that went black. That's hitting 7 on the keyboard. Okay. For show, this just allows us to turn things on and off in our viewport, things that we may not want to see. So if I uncheck polygons, these are going to go away. And we'll just bring those back on now. Our render is the viewport 2.0, and it has a number of settings for it that can be changed. Okay, and then this is our different panel layout. So this is the cameras, and this is uh, the panel layout itself. If we want to change what is in there, like bringing up the uh, the editor for UVs, we can do that. 
go back to perspective camera and then we can uh, switch things in here too so if we want to go to layouts we can go to the single pane which is what we have now two panes side by side uh, we can stack them up and down this way okay so we've got a number of different layouts right here that we can use depending on what we're doing in our scene okay so I'm just going to go back to single pane all right, and a lot of these are just shortcuts for commonly used things under our pull down here, pull down menus. We can access the uh, camera attributes, uh, we can bookmark things, we can bring in our image planes, and a lot of these are going to make more sense once we start working in our scene. Uh, this is the grid right here, so you can turn the grid on and off. Okay, we can also um, set up our uh, view so uh, right now we're looking at the aspect ratio for uh, high definition uh, HD 540 and this is set up through our render settings that's where that is controlled it's actually right down here so our presets right here can change so if I go to uh, 720 close that you'll see that it just went up to 720 all right and then we've got uh, a grid here that we can use we've got action safe and title safe that we can use uh, for putting titles in our scene we want to make sure they're in here action safe is here and then this is the the outer frame right here of our scene for the actual HD 720 okay these were the shortcuts for the different shading modes uh, we can turn on uh, things like uh, ambient occlusion and motion blur and have those show up in here. And then we've also got uh, the shortcut for x-ray is right here. Uh, if we had joints in our scene and we wanted to see the joints uh, in x-ray mode, we would have that. That's for rigging. And then the last thing down here is our gamma. So we can set our different gamma up through here. It defaults on sRGB gamma and it's currently on. This toggles it off right here. So this pretty much covers our navigation for the viewport. Go ahead and spend some time getting comfortable moving in and out uh, with the camera and manipulating the different objects around using what's called QWERTY, Q-W-E-R-T-Y. So we're not using T and Y right now. Um, the Y brought up this little dialog box right here for the cube, which allows us to subdivide. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. Q will make that dialog box go away. Okay, so get comfortable with QWERTY and navigating in your scene, holding down ALT and using the different mouse buttons. And we will come back in the next lesson and start learning about the components of polygons and NURBS.